This is the Ghetto Free Press and I'm George Boston Ryans and once again I'm here with my niece uh, standing in front of the Georgia Capitol. We was here with the rally uh, in support of Kendrick Johnson and this is Trina and she also was here. Uh, I just love having people in my family who are willing to take on the issues of the day. What happened on these grounds the other day was well said. We saw a lot of love, patriotism, etc., etc. But if you don't mind, I want to step up to the plate and I want to tell you the rest of the story. Before there was a Kendrick Johnson that was killed or accidentally died or murdered at the Lowes County High School gymnasium. Before he died, nobody mentioned this at the state capitol in talking to Governor Sonny or Nathan Deal. Now, the reason I say Sonny is because I have already brought this up with Governor Sonny Perdue before Kendrick Johnson died. Look, in May of 1918, 15 to 25 blacks was murdered in Quitman, Brooks County, and Lowndes County, Georgia. The Crisis Magazine of the NAACP highlighted these deaths and the white mob members that murdered these people, their name was sent to the Georgia Capitol, to the governor then, and nothing has been done about it. Their names have not even been released to the general public. So as a goodwill gesture, I'm asking along with those leaders that stood on these grounds for Governor Nathan Deal to release the names of those individuals to set the record straight here in the state of Georgia. Number two, we are requesting and asking that the federal government under Eric Holder review the Equipment 10 plus 2 case from the initiation to Lula Smart trial that is a travesty of justice in my opinion, although it was a mistrial. There was things that were done in that court case that the whole world needs to know about. I haven't finished yet. We have had blacks, Earl Evans, a foot, a basketball player, Ed Denson, all dating white women and was killed. Earl Evans was a police officer, burned up in the police car in Quitman, and nothing has been done about it along the lines of justice. Haven't finished yet. Mary Turner, a black African-American female, was lynched, had her fetus, eight-month-old fetus, ripped from her stomach. A white mob member crushed the head of that baby with the heel of his boot. Nobody want to talk about that. So now, Brother Ryan, what are you saying? Wait a minute, it's going to get better in a minute. Do you not know that the Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, sent an investigator from Macon, Georgia, to Brooks County? He came and they highlighted major voting problems on a public meeting, at a public meeting, on July the 17th, 2012. But do you not know that the Equipment Free Press, the Valdosta Daily Times, no South Georgia news media reported any of that to the general public? It dealt with blacks being intimidated at the polls when they voted by the GBI in terms of the Equipment 10 plus 2 voting irregularities. 
an 80 some year old mother in Marvin, Georgia, refused to go to the polls to vote because she said she had been so intimidated by the GBI. Lula Smart trial highlighted just how the Georgia Bureau of Investigation dealt with the black voters there in Brooks County. But there was no news media there. So all of this that took place in the courtroom in Brooks County, you don't know nothing about it. But it's all been documented because Jesus said in St. John 8, 32, that ye shall know the truth and that the truth shall set and make you free. And so this is why I am here. I am somewhat disappointed because nobody, but nobody addressed the equipment 10 plus 2 case on these grounds at the KJ rally. Do you not know that District Attorney David Miller, Assistant District Attorney Brad Sheely, I believe and others believe should not have even called for an investigation. But they believe that that's the first time in the history of Brooks County that black became the majority on the Board of Education in Brooks County, and therefore they sought out to change that. Moreover, do you not know that no film made a historic indentation upon Quitman, Georgia? For the first time, a black mayor was elected to lead that little small South Georgia town by the name of James C. Brown III. But look, I published that on my YouTube channel. After I published it, then it showed up front page coverage in the Valdosta Daily Times. Well, that's nothing new. But the Equipment Free Press talked about it, but no real drawn out news article would show or reveal that historic accomplishment for the voters in Quitman, Georgia. And so we must understand that something is gravely wrong in here in the state of Georgia and under Nathan Deal, our governor. Do you not know that Valdosta and Lyles County are leading the state of Georgia in jail deaths? From 1994 to 2009, it's been reported that 31 jail deaths have occurred for whatever reason. What have you heard about in your newspaper, on your television station, and on your radio station? It is as if though the old Valdosta 1860 city charter is alive and well throughout South Georgia, which read that the main council shall pass all proper and necessary laws and ordinances for the control of slaves and to control, suppress, and abate all nuisances arriving from hogs, dogs, horses, and other animals strained at large in Valdosta. Do you not know that citizens to be heard in Valdosta are not allowed to call their elected officials by name, and the elected officials are not permitted to respond to the voters, they make the statement that we will get back with you at a later date. Can you imagine that in 2013? Why, hell, we are not in Iraq. We are not in Afghanistan. We are not in some of the other third world communist nations. At the Lowndes County Board of Commissioners meeting, do you not know that they have a little pyramid shape area in the corner where they want you to record at? And this is for all the TV stations. And if you use something as small as an iPhone, smartphone, or one of the other high-tech uh, camera uh, recording devices that the Lowndes County Sheriff Deputy will get you and escort you out of the commissioner's meeting, this is done in the state of Georgia. Do you not know, Mr. Governor Nathan Deal, that I served 21 years in the United States Armed Forces as a correct outstanding, outright, law-abiding citizen, and yet on the May the 25th, 2013, following the death of Kendrick Johnson, that I, they put me under a criminal trespass warning that you should already know about, and until this date, nobody has said anything to me about it. 
I heard this on the Lowndes County Sheriff Deputy Radio. Yet, the sheriff denies any knowledge of it. Wes Taylor, the superintendent of the Lowndes County school system where Kendrick Johnson was found dead, denied any involvement. The probate judge, or court, the superior court, federal court, none of them know anything about it. Yet, I have been restricted. I cannot go to one Lyles County football game. Not in Russia, not in China, not in Germany, not in Somalia, not in Pakistan or Afghanistan, but right here in the state of Georgia in the United States of America. And so you tell us about freedom, you tell us about a constitutional right, it seems to me that we are looking back in the 1800s, to be exact, 1857, during the Dred Scott decision. During the Dred Scott decision, it was written as passed by the Supreme Court that no black man had any rights that a white man had to respect. And so I'm standing here in the state of Georgia on the Capitol steps in Atlanta to say to Governor Nathan Deal that it is indeed time to listen to the, what the people said the other day on behalf of the Georgia citizens and though all those who frequent Georgia. Listen, I haven't finished yet. Do you not know that the Honorable President of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, Floyd E. Rose, was threatened, received racial slurs at a at J.C. Shack polling place in Valdosta, Georgia, and a white Caucasian were arrested, taken to the jail, and yet when our local and only daily newspaper, the Valdosta Daily Times, refused to publish his name, no, 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 no I'm sorry, refused to even publish the incident itself. I asked them to report it, and eventually they reported it, but you not, do you not know they never mentioned his name? Let me close on this note. I got many more, but I got to tell you about the KJ case. I got to tell you about my criminal trespass warning, but I forgot to tell you about the 14-year-old girl that was handcuffed, hog tagged behind her back because the Lyons County Sheriff Deputy to, to, to uh, charge her with attacking an educator, hitting an educator. The educators wrote out a valid statement along with others saying that that 14-year-old black girl never even struck an educator. And yet she still have to spend her money to go through the court system. And do you not know that Judge Ellaby and the Honorable James Counsel ruled against her? This mother is weeping. She come to me asking me, George, what's going on here in Lyons County? Now the KJ death and all these other things that are happening in Lyons County and South Georgia is nothing new. And so what we want to do today, and I am saying to all good American citizens, I don't believe any of us, listen, especially in the state of Georgia, I don't believe any of us should put our life on the line to go fight in these foreign nations unless they ensure that our rights here at home are secure. I am a veteran. I put 21 years Mr. Governor Nathan Deal, the Justice Department are aware that my rights have been violated. The Justice Department said they were going to pass it on to the Georgia Attorney General. Yet I am 215 days and I have not heard a word from anybody. The Honorable Sheriff Prine of Lowndes County said to me, and I have it all documented, that he would get back to me about this criminal trespass warning and I'm still waiting. This is why I haven't done anything. I have voted for the sheriff in his first run for the sheriff of Lyons County. So I'm waiting for the sheriff Prine to get back with me. Because that's the flavor of my nature and the nature of my flavor. And so now I want to say to the black civil rights leaders that stood here, all of this stuff you didn't know about. And this is why our black leaders must understand 
that you just can't do what others have done for us and choose our leaders or choose our journalists or choose the stories you want to tell to the general public. You got to put the people on the stage who are down here at the grassroots, who are sucking in the dust, who are eating up the poison, whose lives are threatened. We don't need those who have a status horn on their head representing justice and equality and their wounds in the struggle. What we need is the truth, as Jesus said, and you cannot, you cannot give the truth if you don't know the truth. And if you don't know the truth, then you ought to ask the people who are out here in the ditch and they know the truth and they will speak the truth, but no, you do what whites have done to us before. You won't put those people on the stage. The Black Panther Party should have been on the stage. Others who are in the ditches that don't be under the cameras, who don't make 100000 a year, who don't live in gated communities, who don't own a vehicle, need to speak. They need to have a voice. And I just got a call, or rather a letter, during this rally about Hayes Prison and how there are 200 inmates, and out of the 200 inmates, 190 of them are black, yet they only have five guards working there. And you talk about a Soweto, if you want to talk about Cape Town, if you want to talk about yesterday, according to the letters that I'm receiving from these parents and children with their loved ones incarcerated in that Georgia prison, they say it is a disgrace to the human race. I don't know, but I will assure you that soon we will be discussing and we will be giving you more of the truth. Now, why have I said all of this? Short form is because you have a right to know. If we have a right to go into the armed forces, they don't ask us for an ID because they'll create one for you if there's a war going on. They don't ask you none of these questions during time of a war. In fact, they will let some black folk and white folk out of prison to fight the war. But when we want justice on the street for KJ, when we want the 14-year-old girl story to be reported in the news in the United States of America, they won't report it. They say we have a free press. I bear witness that they are lying. They are lying. That look good on paper. But until we take another look at the Constitution and how white police officers are shooting black men and boys down like wild dogs. The white people are not in fear of the black deputies, the black police officers, because they don't have a record of seeing a white man with a cell phone and think it's a nine millimeter. They don't look at a black, a white man with his comb as he comb his hair and think it's an AK-47. It's only the white police officers that look at the black man and woman and see a cell phone and think it's a 45 and they pull the trigger rather than using a taser or rather than trying to talk to them as if they are human beings and that their life means something more than a flea on the ground. But we are determined. Our ancestors had to fight to go get a drink of water from a water fountain. We had to to fight just to get a right to go fight. We had to fight that out to protect our girls from being raped by white men and producing half black children. And then we took care of those children that they produced. And so you try to tell us about family values. You try to tell us about affirmative action. Well, white people in truth was the first recipients of affirmative action and set aside. Bonanza was set aside. I Love Lucy was set aside. Andy Griffin was set aside. All these movies, a long range in Tonto, all these were set aside for whites. All police jobs, all the federal jobs, all the good jobs, all the money making jobs. Going to schools and universities was denied black people. And so we know about affirmative action for white people. It's only when they talk about correcting the wrongs of the past under affirmative action and set aside that you now have a problem with these. We are not a stupid people. We are an educated people, just like our ancestors that built the pyramids in Egypt. But you don't want us to know that. And so you hid our history. 
But Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and that the truth shall set and make you free. I'm going to close now because I love you so much that I had to do this clip. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rhymes. Bye-bye. We go.